Welcome back to another video guys. Matt here from Gentry Custom Knives and if you are new to the channel or just found this video um, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and check out all my other content that I put out over the years. Um, I cover a lot of basic information on knife making for new knife makers and also more in-depth stuff if you're just trying to up your game. Now today's video I'm going to answer a lot of questions I get about heat treat ovens and, and specifically this is the even heat lb 22.5 oven um, i think a lot of the information i'm going to cover uh we'll talk about the even heat and it kind of will go over into the paragon oven as well which i guess as far as my knowledge goes those are kind of the two top guys as far as knife heat treating ovens so i'm going to just try to cover a lot of the questions that i get asked all the time and also the questions that I had when I purchased this oven um, that I couldn't exactly find the information on. So if you're in the market for a heat treat oven or just want some more general information on them, uh, stay tuned. Okay, to start off this video, um, I wanted to just kind of show you guys this oven. Now this is the LB22.5 from Even Heat and this is the 240 volt version and it's also the tap touchscreen controller version, which I'm going to get into a little bit later. Now, when I was in the market for buying one of these, I had a lot of questions that when you go on the website, um, there's like a lot of websites, I'm sure you guys have found out they're not super specific on stuff. And when you're spending this kind of money, there was a lot of unanswered questions, I guess. And that's, that's why I wanted to make this video. Um, the first thing that wasn't really covered and I'm sure if you search and search you maybe can find it but I didn't have a 240 volt line ran to my shop to power this and so obviously I did a ton of research to try to figure out if I could get away with the 110 volt version um, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have done as well and I after the research and after everything basically bumping up to that 240 volt version is going to get you a lot faster ramp times um, get you up to temp a lot faster now I don't have any experience with that 110 volt version because what I ended up doing is running a separate 240 volt line out to my shop specifically for this um, and I ran a 30 amp breaker uh, line I'm not an electrician I'm just letting you guys know what I have that's working um, looking back, I'm really, really glad I went with the 240 volt version. Now, the main thing that I think you guys need to realize is when you're, if you're a hobby knife maker and no time constraints, you're not selling knives, you're not, uh, trying to kind of conserve your time, then maybe get the 110 version if you're not worried about that ramp rate. But like for me, for example, I heat treated, I think 25 knives yesterday and about half of them are high carbon steel, the other half are stainless. So uh, just roughly my high carbon ones, I have to get to about 1500 degrees and the stainless ones have to be about 2000 degrees. So if you're ramping to that 1500 degree mark, I don't quote me on the times, but it's pretty fast to get from nothing to 1500. You're maybe, I don't know, say 15 minutes, okay? But then when you ramp it from 1500 up to that 2000 degree mark, it takes quite a bit more time to get right up to temp. And it loses temp fast too when you load blades in it. So I definitely, I think I'm a little bit impatient, uh, but time is money when it comes to all this stuff. And having it ramp and get to temp as fast as possible is really important. So I'm very, very happy I took the time to run that separate uh, 240 volt uh, run to the shop to make this oven uh, work. So the other part of this, I'm sure you guys have done a little bit of research probably if you're watching this video, is there's multiple different uh, types of ovens that Even Heat offers and Paragon, but I think the main thing you have to kind of realize is the size of the blades you'll be working with and also in the future. Um, I almost, I think they make this in an 18 inch version. Uh, this one's the 22 and a half inch version, a 27 inch version, and I think they make even a couple bigger ones that I didn't even really look at. Um, now, the 22 and a half inch version I think is probably one of the most popular ones they sell. It covers a huge variety of blades that you can fit in here. I mean, if you're doing stuff bigger than that, uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> maybe swords or something like that. But this thing, you can fit big chef knives. I do a big brisket knife like this one right here. Um, and these fit in here, no problem. Uh, so 
you know, definitely take that into consideration. Don't just get the smallest one they have if you think maybe in the future you'll be doing some bigger chef knives or some stuff like that. It's not way more money to go to that next size up, and that's what I ended up doing. Now, I purchased my oven through Soul Ceramics, which worked out really good. At the time I bought mine, it seemed like it was an 8 or 10 week wait to get it. Uh, but everything went smooth, packaging was good, everything was uh, working as it was supposed to. Now, if you go to their website, if you go to Soul Ceramics, or there's a bunch of different companies that sell it, I'm just going to use that for uh, reference. Now, there's a few options that you can pick from when you're ordering your oven. Now, if you decide to get the LB22.5 like mine, you can go down and you can pick different controllers. Now, this is the tap controller. This isn't the Wi-Fi tap controller, which was an extra, don't quote me, maybe another 150 on top of the tap controller. Um, I believe with the Wi-Fi one, you can control it from your phone or from an app or from Bluetooth or I don't know. To me, that was just like, I don't really need to worry about that. But I'm definitely glad I went with the tap controller. Now, Everybody you talk to probably about these will tell you the same thing I'm about to tell you is just spend a little extra money and get the tap controller. Um, I would have to kind of, I've messed around with the other controller that they have. Uh, I don't even remember what it's called, but it's kind of like if you had to compare a new iPhone to like your old like flip phone that just has the one, two, three buttons on it to send a text or whatever. It's not even comparable. So definitely... Uh, if you're going to make the investment into one of these, just get the tap controller. I will take the camera down here and show you some of the functions on this in a minute, uh, just so you get an idea of how it works. Um, it's really smooth. It works just like a touchscreen phone or whatever. Um, very, very good feature. Now, a couple other options on there when you go to order it. Um, you can add one of these fixtures, okay? And it's... Mine's kind of dirty. And you can see it's just like a little... It's like made out of fire brick, the same stuff, almost it's lying on the inside of this. And there's these little, see if you guys can kind of see, these little porcelain, whatever material pegs, okay, that stick in these slots. And that way you can fit a bunch of blades in there and keep them up and down. Now, I am super careful with this all the time. And I already had one break on me. And I think it's this one that's broken, you can see. And it's not even like I did anything stupid. They're just super fragile. And I think it's an extra $75 to add that little blade fixture to it. And obviously you need it. You need something to be able to hold your blades in there up and down. Um, but I wish they had something a little more durable than what this is. It's like very fragile and you're really careful with it. But um, Definitely add that. Maybe in the future they'll have something a little bit better, but until then, definitely add that. Um, the other thing I wish I would have done with this one is there's an option to add like a quiet relay or a silent relay or whatever it's called. Um, and I've talked about it in other videos because um, if you're running a heat treat cycle, once it hits temp, it automatically kicks off that relay and you hear it click. So every time it kicks on and off to hold temp, which is every couple seconds, it's clicking constantly. So, um, you know, when you're in the shop working and you're constantly hearing that clicking noise, it's kind of annoying. So uh, definitely upgrade to that. I don't remember how much the cost was, not much. But like I said, you're making this investment. Uh, just make it to where you're happy with it for years to come. All right, so here's kind of what it looks like. Mine's kind of all dirty and stuff from using it. But this is the main screen. As soon as you turn it on, there's a main power switch right in the back here that I'll try to show you guys. Main big power switch. And here is your touch screen. Now, mine's kind of dirty. I probably should have cleaned it before doing this, but you can see kind of what it looks like at startup. Really, really nice. Gives you a date, time, status, and then your menu and your start option. Now, what's cool about this is you can program all your settings in this to where whatever steel you're gonna be heat treating, you can go to start, see if I can do it without looking. And then you can see I have all my different schedules saved in here. And I'm trying to do it while looking through the camera here. Um, but you can see that's a really nice feature to where you don't have to constantly reload your uh, heat treat schedule. So just for example, if I was going to do a batch of stainless right here, you can kind of highlight it and you'll hit your start button. 
it'll say, would you like to add a delayed start? And that would be a no. And then just like that, it's gonna kick on. And it's showing you right here, your set, you heard that kick on right there. Set point temp, hold time, ramp rate as fast as possible. Shows your current kiln temp, your steps, and then the name of your schedule. So pretty cool to cancel that, hit abort. Are you sure you want to abort this firing? Yes. So you can see how user-friendly this TAP controller is and why I really, really recommend it. All right, well, I hope that answered your guys' questions on the heat treat oven. I highly recommend if you're going to be selling knives, you need to get a, a heat treat oven. The confidence level once you have one of these goes way up knowing that every one of your knives is heat treated perfectly. Um, it's the number one most important thing with making a knife is that that heat treat is right. So if you have any other questions about this, feel free to reach out. I'm real easy to get a hold of. Uh, drop a comment below, shoot me a message over on Instagram, and I hope you guys learned something from this video. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something from it. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. If you're interested in any of my knives, there's always a link in the description below how to get a hold of me. Um, I'm really easy to contact and I'd love to work with you. So like always, guys, thanks for watching.